Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. The sun is setting once more on the Strait of Joe Bralter, which separates the Hermitarranian Sea from the Hermitlantic Ocean, of course. But this dredging project is taking me a while. And one thing I've realized is apparently creepers can spawn in the doors I've been using. So now they're just going to bubble up to the surface and attack me while I'm in my boat. So that might not have been the best planning. Either way, though, what we need to do this episode is focus our attention outward. Not outward toward the Herm Atlantic, but outward toward the server as a whole. Rather than just thinking about what can I do to make my base better? What can I do to make my lighthouse better? What can I do to fix the dog problem that has been plaguing the shopping district? People have been reporting all sorts of issues with those dogs. I think I need to formally kick off my campaign for dog catcher. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to need to build a campaign sign. And I heard from CubFan there's some coordinates where we can just go make maps. I'm going to have to get, you know, iron and redstone and then material to make the sign. You know, hopefully it'll say something funny, but we'll figure that out as we go. Anyway, farewell, beautiful lighthouse. We're about to leave you behind. Time skip. We have arrived here at the mapping district, and woo boy, let me tell you, it sure is something. I am just going to create the most majestic 64 block high cobblestone pillar as a monument to the diligent efforts of the other hermits who have been toiling over here for so very long to create things that we all enjoy and appreciate. Wow, 64 blocks takes a lot longer to place than I thought it was going to. But that's okay, because you know what? I'm sure that placing all the blocks we need to in our dog catcher sign won't be a chore or a burden or a time-consuming hassle at all. Yep, this is how big these maps have to be. Now, what is that? Is that a Kool-Aid man? Okay, that's awesome. But anyway, as you can see, there's the Hermiton Herald map. There, I think that one is the Mumbo for Mayor map here. So we need to find a free space to make the Joe Hills map. And I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to do it right here. This is it, you guys. This is going to be the Joe Hills map. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like now. Let's take that empty map. Boom. Looking good. It's got a little bit of an island here. That looks like a, a buff guy saying like, hey, a vote for Joe Hills is... What gets me excited about weightlifting or something. I don't know. We'll workshop that and then do a better job. But anyway, we need to have a clear campaign message that lets people know exactly who to vote for. Why, where, when, how. Of course, no one has any idea how any of this works, because as far as I can tell, I'm just basically hijacking Green's thing, so I have an excuse to put lava on diamonds. And so, this is just... This entire campaign is admittedly um, just vandalism with extra steps. But that's what makes it art. So, let's go ahead and get working on our campaign sign. Time skip! I have spent approximately two and a half hours working on this sign, and as you can tell, we got several letters laid down. I am not a typographical expert, but I do my best to internalize the lessons that Nate Pecos of Blambot teaches, as well as, um, you know, those folks at House Industries, and, you know, these folks at House and at Blambot, they know what they're doing. I don't, but it turns out about 12 years of listening to podcasts about typography and writing and, you know reading weird tweets and books about it. I'm not entirely, you know, a failure. This isn't good either, but, like, this could be a lot worse. For two and a half hours, having never done this in Minecraft before, placing blocks on the ground, having not mapped this out with graphing paper or even written it down in a sketch in front of me, which is something that real artists do. I actually should have a sketch pad and have this in front of me in some way. We have got a start here, though. But what we don't have is enough diorite to see this project through. I have never run out of diorite before, ever, on the Hermitcraft server, at least that I can recall. Leave a comment in the YouTube comment section below if you recall a time I forgot that I 
didn't have diorite or realized I could use more. I don't know. Either way, we've used it. We've used all the diorite on the sign, and we still have more letters to place, presumably. I mean, we could just go plaster this all around town, but that just doesn't feel like that's where we want to go with this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some more of everyone's favorite rock or mineral, and I'll be right back. Time skip. Good news, everyone. I was able to find a bunch of nether quartz that I could combine with cobblestone to make diorite. You know, all you need is two quartz and two cobble, and then boom, there you go. That's two diorite. So uh, we got an extra quartz left over. I don't know what we're going to do with that garbage, but it's fine. Anyway, now that we have enough diorite, what we need to do is make slabs and then continue to work on this beautiful cursive sign. So away we go. We did it, y'all. Vote Joe Hills for dog catcher. And just to make sure people really get the message, I went ahead here and I drew a face. I think this is going to really make people empathize with the speaker in this sign. All signs need to have a point of view character. And there's ours. It's this little smiley face guy. Now let's go make a whole bunch of copies of this. Times they are a changing here on the Hermitcraft server. We got a whole new line of different transit lines in the nether here. But you know what? We have a new line of reasoning about what good government looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and hang that up here where everybody can see it. Vote at Joe Hills for dog catcher. Yep. It's a real simple message. And you know what? This one's easier to read than that one. Who can read that? A red on white? That's, that's just terrible. It doesn't have this, like, adorable-looking fellow down here either pointing up at it. That's, a, that's an oversight. I don't know what that weird worm thing is going to do on there. But you know what? We are going to go ahead and let's just kind of get the word out in general about this. You know, I don't want to... I don't have a ton of these. I, I need to hold on to some. But we're going to go ahead and just place one here. And... Hey, what is this? This sign has... A, you know what? Let's go ahead and, and throw this over here too. Anywhere that I see a Mumbo for Mayor sign, we probably want to add a Joe Hills for Dog Catcher sign. I don't need to overdo it, but I don't want to underdo it either. I mean, I've only got a few of these, so... Actually, I need to hold on to one. So yeah, here here's a good place for it. Boom. There we go. Now they're symmetrical. Now, I mean, now. Now they are. Hopefully that reads... That E looks like an R. I'm going to regret that later. They're going to all vote for Jor Hills, and I'm going to be really disappointed. But you know what? I should probably put one on the town hall as well. And then after that, we need to move on to actual productive work on the server. Because um, this is destructive work. We are, you know, aiming to cover all the diamonds with lava and all that. Um... But yeah, let's go ahead and just put up... Oh, yeah. See, we'll just put ours in parallel to that one. There we go. We, there's a Mumbo for Mayor sign up there. And we can just toss a nice little Joe Hills for Dog Catcher sign. Boom. Take that Mumbo Jumbo. I'm not actually going to sit on this Diamond Throne because, you know, I don't want to burn my behind. But, yeah. Watch out. When you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you cover everything in lava anyway. But you look like a bad sport about it. So it's really important I win because children watch this show. Time skip! You know, I'm actually on my way shortly to an interview with the Roven reporter B. Suma, who of course was wildly inspired by that Peter Parker movie he saw. He's like, I gotta go join me, the Daily Planet. And I don't know that he did a good job. He joined the Hermiton Herald instead. But I'm sure that they're going to need pictures of the Spider-Man regardless. Anyway, what I'm doing now is uh, I, I really want to make sure that my interview is well received. So I think I'm going to go ahead and buy some extra um, advertising space in the Herald in exchange for these diamonds. Now, Cleo knows that I'm covering all the diamonds with lava this season. So I need to go ahead and just, you know, cover them with lava and then have a book with the coordinates, you know? But in the meantime, what I need to do now is make uh, these diamonds line up more clearly. Ugh, 
These are not sufficiently covered. I, I can't do a bad job at this. Cleo would mock me. Publicly. I can't have that. Her opinion is too important to the other people on this server. And possibly to me. Though I'll never admit it, so don't record any of this. And repost it as like, Joe Hills absolutely cares what zombie Cleo thinks. Here you can tell in this in this montage of Joe being sad when Cleo doesn't like what he what he did. Um because we're we're not doing that. We're just we're just covering these with lava because that's what we want to do, and we're doing it well because that's what we want to do. We care about being good at what we do for competency's sake. And uh boom, there we go. Diamonds covered in lava. Now we just need to dig a tunnel to connect to the other tunnel that we dug. Last time we had Cleo go on one of these scavenger hunts. Time skip. I would be shocked if I became mayor, Asuma. I'm actually running for dog catcher. We certainly need a dog catcher, Joe. And you know what? I think I think you might just be the man for the job. Uh, you've got my vote, you know? Thanks, Asuma. You've got my vote. We have returned from our interview with B. Suma, the B journalist. And I gotta say, I think that this tunnel is looking pretty good here. Now, one thing I realized is, like, I should probably start, like, mining out all the redstone from the walls and just kind of, like, filling that in with, I don't know, garbage blocks because there's a brand new store on the server that is going to allow us to trade redstone for goods and services. And if there's one thing I would like to promote on the server, it is the idea that we don't need diamonds to have a functioning economy. Diamonds belong submerged in lava, just like the Earth's iron core. You know, the earth is round and has iron submerged in lava. Minecraft is square. It should have diamonds submerged in lava. It's just that simple. So, anyway, what we need to do now is take all of these redstone blocks here and head to this new redstone torch shop that Impulse and, I believe, Tango set up back in the shopping district. While we are there, we can see about dropping off this Herald ad buy book for CubFan135. Apparently, Cleo got tired of me... Um, managing all of her money, and so she hired CubFan to manage all of her money. I don't know why all of Cleo's money comes from diamonds that I randomly leave in the ground, covered with lava, but, you know, I'm not in charge of her finances. That's CubFan. There it is, folks, the red zone. That is where we are going to go exchange our redstone for goods and or services. Also, I gotta say, if I'm elected dog catcher, one of the first things I'm gonna do after I cover all the diamonds with lava is I'm gonna plow under this thing and build a bridge across here. This is so dumb there's no bridge here. And that is um, exactly the job of a dog catcher because there's a dog nearby right here. So let's collect all the dogs humanely. Let's build a bridge. Let's cover the diamonds with lava. I'm sure there's other things that I need in my platform. Oh, yeah. Let's let Joe Hills be the one who deletes the nether. That shouldn't be an administrative position's job. Deleting entire worlds should be an elected position. I feel very strongly about that. But I've been told that apparently that is just something that's going to happen on the server. But what we actually care about is the ugly torch. I don't know if you ever read the ugly duckling, but it's like that, but more inflammatory, you know? So here's where we have... A mega deal. Whoa, Ravager delivery, 12 stacks of redstone blocks. I don't know if I need one of those right now. That's a little much, but I do like it uses redstone blocks for the purchase. We got some empty um, chests that people can just casually sit on here to relax. I like that. People want to feel at ease when they're shopping. Let's see what we got over here. Six redstone blocks for 64 wool. Ooh, wait. Six redstone blocks for 64 emeralds? That seems pretty good. 18 redstone blocks for 32 iron. Wow, all of this stuff is actually pretty reasonable. 6 redstone blocks for 64 sea cucumbers. Ooh. Okay, I am pretty excited about this store. I don't know what wither roses are for, but I like them. How many redstone blocks do I actually have? Why is there not a crafting bench in here for people to be able to combine their stuff? What if I show up with a bunch of loose redstone and I can't make redstone blocks? This is a huge oversight, you guys. This is a huge oversight, you guys. Is there a... um, 
complaint box, second huge oversight. We are two huge oversights into this. Okay, the whole place is made out of wood, and not a single thing is a crafting bench. Not a single thing is a crafting bench. We're going to have to go across the street to the competition to use their crafting bench. How does this shop not have a crafting bench either? Okay, well, I'm sure whatever this place is have a, has a crafting bench. Oh, it's the Herald. It does, though. So, hey, that worked out, actually. Okay. We have 26 blocks of redstone total. That is good. Where do we actually leave our advertisement? Where's the... Is this the payment chest? Okay, so that's where you sign up. So I'm guessing based off of Iskel's example that this is where we leave our Herald ad buy purchases. So I'll just drop that in there too. Boom. Next problem. And having created those blocks the way we want it, let's head back here to the ugly torch. We are just uh, taking care of business. Alrighty, so what do I actually need? I need iron. Ooh, but I don't have 32 redstone. Brr, that hurts. But, if I get six redstone blocks for 64, I could maybe go get some iron tools or something from trading with people. Also, I could get green wool, which I could use for elaborate signage. No, you know what? I need to focus on the things I, I actually need. Right now, I actually do need sea cucumbers for my uh, trenching work. Because we are working on dredging out a good amount of the Strait of Gibraltar, and that's a problem that we don't have a way to let those. Also, not having ender pearls right now has been really, really hurting. Alrighty, so with two blocks of redstone here, we can purchase eight stacks of these ender pearls. Now, you might say, Joe, is that really a reasonable way to load those into there? Like, how are you going to be able to tell if you actually bought eight stacks? Well, you know what? I can do math, kind of. Not really. The redstone here um, was actually 18 redstone blocks for 32 iron. I misread that earlier. So I think I am going to grab a bunch of those. And that leaves us with two redstone blocks left over. Mmm. In some ways, I want to blow all that on ender pearls, but I'm just going to store these in here for later. Oh, whoops, I accidentally took too many sea pickles, too. I, my reading comprehension is not great, it seems. There we go. Six redstone blocks for 64 sea pickles. Yes. So the pearls, it's like four stacks is 64, but the sea pickles, one stack is 64. This is kind of a confusing shop, but you know what? I'm willing to deal with the learning curve in order to, you know, be a part of the economy. Wait, it's 18 redstone blocks? Ugh, how am I so bad at this? How am I so bad at this? This is unacceptable levels of arithmetic problem. This is why stores have a person whose whole job it is to know how this stuff works. Okay, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. We're gonna get this. Okay, it's fine. Let's just go take the sea pickles we got and go work on dredging out the Strait of Joe Brawlter more, because if I can't keep my own, you know, straight properly dredged, how are people going to trust me to wrestle a bunch of dogs and burn a bunch of diamonds and build a bunch of bridges and delete a bunch of nethers? They're not, right? We got to do it right. We got to set a good example, and that starts at home. So let's head home to my mega base. Time skip! We have returned here to the mouth of the Hermiterranean Sea, and I gotta say, all this dredging I've been doing has worked out pretty well. It's not perfect, but as you can see, we now have a reasonable channel through which ships might pass. I really should widen it for larger ships. You know, this is just not gonna be enough space. But it is a solid start, and thanks to this night vision potion, it is actually pretty readable, hopefully, for you guys watching at home. I have added sea cucumbers down there so that folks who are not chugging night vision potions before their recording segments can actually, like, see what we're doing. And, of course, I still have a few random... Uh, uh, not, uh, a few random doors here that I'm using as airlocks as we dig. But, you know what? That's okay. That is fine. 
we're gonna widen all this this whole thing needs to go probably out to where these further pickles are here and once we can get this all a uniform depth we'll rip out that beacon and possibly deal with this uh, sand hill over here clear out some of the kelp there's no amount of work that can't be done here there's a limitless opportunity for improvement at the same time though you know that's what a mega base is it's a, a huge season-long project and I think that this Strait of Joe Bralter is going to be a most excellent mega base. This regional improvement plan can rest in pieces at the end of seven seasons of Hermitcraft. Or season seven of Hermitcraft. Whichever one comes first. They'll probably occur simultaneously. But you know what? I'm not an expert on like chronological implementations of seasonal and diurnal rotations and revolutions. Oh! Speaking of random nonsense, I should probably get into the outro of this episode. You might have noticed that this episode was pre-roll ad-free. There was no ad before the video, and that is thanks to our new $200 a month Patreon sponsor, Chris. So thank you very much, Chris, for saving everybody 15 seconds before this video started. You are truly doing great work. And to everybody else uh, who might have noticed that this episode was mid-roll ad-free, well, for that... You can thank Kathleen Heath, and in lieu of that mid-roll ad, I will now read a poem of my own devising. This one is entitled, Advice. I hear you should only shop while your stomach is content. Wake only when your mind is rested, they say. A magazine cover reads in the checkout line, 10 spring tips to stop worshipping graven images. But I am hungry, and I am tired, and I know that at least eight of those tips are recycled. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.